So this is a short introduction to the production pipeline for making a teaser or trailer. Now, in principle, there's no fundamental difference between making a teaser or a trailer and making a film. It's essentially the same thing. You're just making a very, very short version of your project in order to tease audiences and get them to go and see it. So I've got pictures of um, Mr. Incredible here from the teaser for the first Incredibles movie because it's a particularly good example of a really, really excellent teaser for a movie. So what's the difference between a teaser and a trailer? This is from um, difference between .NET. It's kind of useful. Um, the difference between teasers and trailers isn't really big, but uh, you probably do want to think about which one you're making. Um, a trailer tends to contain a bunch of different shots from the movie. Obviously, there's no actual movie here. We're just making a pretend teaser trailer, uh, whereas a teaser might be one long shot or one short shot. Um, uh, and it might well be material that's not used in the actual film itself. But fundamentally, they're very, very similar in their structure. So let's consider the four basic stages in making a film, any kind of film. Uh, development, that's where you come up with the idea, uh, the concept. Pre-production, where you do your storyboards and uh, develop your assets and so on. Production, where you actually make the thing. And then post where you do all the sound and uh, foley and color blending and all of that kind of thing. So let's start with development. It's sometimes called development hell um, because you can take it in any direction. There's no right answer to anything. It can be whatever you want it to be, which is great, wonderful, creative, but also can bring frustrations. So you've got to start off by researching. You want to take a look at teasers and trailers, take a really close look which ones work, which ones do you like, and then copy that format closely. Um, then you want to come up with an idea for your own film, uh, then do a, a rough outline and or script um, so that you can tell the story that you want to tell. So let's start with research. Let's take a look at a great teaser trailer. Back to Mr. Incredible. This is a really beautiful example of a terrific teaser for an excellent movie. Uh, makes you want to go and see the movie. So don't reinvent the wheel copy the format, obviously not copy the thing itself, but the format, um, and uh, uh, base your own teaser on that. Now, you're going to need to divide up some key roles on the project. Someone's going to need to direct. That's the key creative lead and the person who has the final say creatively. Um, and the producer who's going to organize the thing, keep everyone in line. Editor, this is a very important role. This person needs to know Premiere and will probably end up doing stuff like sound design as well, adding music, uh, sound effects. Uh, you need a writer. This is often the director because it's the director's vision. So the writer and director are often the same person. Someone's got to do boards, even rough boards. You don't need to be able to draw well, but you need to be able to do some kind of drawing. Then you need someone who's got a bit of a facility with camera, 3D layout to do the cinematography. And of course, a CG supervisor who's going to do the render tests, check the lighting and make sure that the whole pipeline works well. You'll notice animator isn't in here because I assume everyone's going to be animating on this uh, project. OK, so let's start with a concept, a what if moment. What if the toys in the closet came alive? That's the basis for Toy Story. Uh, what if there were monsters in the closet? Um, Monsters Inc. You'll notice that these are all Pixar slides. Pixar is really, really good at this. So animation often begins with a what if uh, concept. So once you've got your what if, you want to write it down. What's your rough outline of the story? And we're less concerned here with the outline of the film because that's an imaginary project. We don't really need to figure that in any kind of detail. But we do need to figure out what the teaser or trailer is going to look like. And you need to write it out on it. And it should not be more than a single page. Because remember, in script terms, one page equals one minute. So you can either write it out as a story, as an outline, or you could do it as an actual script. It doesn't really matter. In script, proper script format, um, Courier, you can uh, find the script format in Word, I believe, these days. Again, one page is one minute, so don't go over a page. Or you can just write it out as a shot list. Shot one, establishing shot, Gotham City. Shot two, close up on Batman's face, whatever. But what you've got to do, and this is the most important bit, is write it out uh, so that you know exactly what it is you're going to board. So the important thing to remember is that you need to make sure that your shot list or script or outline or whatever you want to call it uh, describes what's going to be in the final film uh, and that you agree on this and that you don't move into pre-production until you're happy with your script. Don't think, oh, we'll fix it in later. It's a lot 
we'll fix it later. It's a lot more expensive to draw storyboards and mess around with 3D layout than it is to figure stuff out with pencil and paper on the page or in Word. Okay, so once we've got that sorted, let's move on. So now you want to board it and you board the story and one of the um, techniques traditionally used by storyboard artists is to take the agreed script and then you draw little thumbnail sketches of each uh, moment, each beat in the script, each shot, uh, and then those become those little thumbnail sketches, they become the storyboards because it's a lot quicker to draw thumbnail sketches than it is to draw boards. So if you work that, act, that, that out actually on the script itself, it speeds up the whole process. So, once you've done your storyboards, you're going to pitch it. You can, you can show the director or show the rest of the team. You can stick them up on the wall. You can, of course, go straight into a storyboard animatic, but the pitch is still the best way to get feedback on your work. So uh, you can paste these up and then just pitch it. You'll see they've got the story stick here. Just pitch the boards, explain what's happening. Does it work? Have we got too many panels? Do we need too few panels? You can do extra boards right there and then, very quick stuff. Uh, make sure that the basic outline is working and then the next thing to do is to go and scan them and send them off to editorial and this basically means somebody working in Premiere to cut, usually Premiere, to cut all the boards together and assemble the animatic um, and the animatic is what we call the assembled boards with music, sound effects and voices added and this is really where you make your film. Remember, in animation, you have to pre-edit. It's not like live action where you can go and shoot a bunch of footage and then cut it all together. You have to do this at the storyboard stage. It's too expensive to do animation and then have it hit the cutting room floor. Don't forget, with the teaser trailer, you're going to have a lot of boilerplate. There's going to be some stuff at the beginning. Uh, there's, you know, we might have a kind of fantasy production company who's making this thing. Um, um, you might also want a bit of coming soon, you know, stuff like that. Just look at what other teaser trailers have done and add that in. And you get this stuff for free because you can find this on the web and it is um, very cheap. So once you've got your storyboard animatic up and running, you're going to need, you might need narration. Are you going to have the trailer guy do a voice? Are you going to have voiceover? You don't, you might not need it, but you almost certainly are going to need some temp music, some sound effects. Um, and the uh, final edit of all of this is called an animatic. Sometimes it's also called a story reel. Um, and uh, there's an old-fashioned term which isn't used much anymore called a Leica reel because they used to shoot them on Leica cameras. Now, what about um, uh, voice talent? Going to get Brad to do a voice? Probably not, right? So you're going to have to find your friends, yourselves, your family, your colleagues. Uh, you're going to need a proper microphone, find a quiet space and try and voice try and record the voiceover. You may well find that the first version is a bit flat, in which case you're going to have to do multiple takes to find the right sense of energy and fun in the uh, voiceover. Once you've got all this working, you're going to show it. You're going to have some kind of screening, some kind of presentation. Um, this is the point uh, when you, people will either understand what's going on or they won't. They will give you feedback. The trick is not to be defensive at this stage. If it's not working, it's not working. Don't take it personally. The important thing is to get notes from your audience and go in and fix it. You're always looking to make it better, and your audience wants you to make it better. So you go in and fix it and improve it. Go back to the boards, revise your boards, add extra boards, take some away, whatever you need to do um, uh, to get you into production. You've also got to be thinking at the same time about what your teaser trailer is going to look like. Um, uh, what, think about the lighting, think about the environments, the character design, the props, uh, all that kind of stuff, because you're going to have to figure that out at some point. Um, now, you're probably not going to have time to make your own characters, so you've got to think about what rigs and sets you can actually use, and actually you need to consider this up at the concept stage because it's no use having a concept about a giant alien creature if you don't have an alien creature to work with. There are increasingly a growing number of free rigs out there. Animation Buffet is a great resource. Trong CG has loads of terrific rigs. And of course, there's Turbo Squid and Creative Crash. So do a reality check. Make sure you can get what you need. Um, make sure you can get the sets and the props you need to figure it all out. You've got to test your rigs. Uh, DreamWorks, they used to call this rig wrecking. Uh, does the rig work? Does it break? 
what can you do with it, make sure that it's fit for your pipeline. And you might want to do a little bit of animation test, you know, character development. What do these characters do? The reason I've got Buzz Lightyear up here is he's such a distinctive character with such distinctive gestures and physical acting choices. Um, someone needs to think about lighting. That would be your CG supervisor. He's going to think uh, about a color script. You know, what, what color is it? What are the shots going to look like? This is a, these are color keys from the Backwater Gospel, a film that was made up at the animation workshop. It's a very, very beautiful color keys where they really thought about um, what everything was going to look like long before the um, final result was done. And you're going to need to, to find all your assets, create your environments. Hopefully we're not making these because we don't really have time, but you can find tons and tons of free stuff at uh, TurboSquid and the free 3 dmodelscom and so on. Uh, right, once the animatic is finalized, editorial um, will export it. Remember to number all your shots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so that we're not uh, sitting there in animation dailies going this shot and that shot without anybody know, knowing what we're talking about. All shots should be numbered, and those shots will not change throughout the film, even if you lose some shots. So let's say you shot nine gets cut from the movie. You don't renumber. You just lose that shot. Say you need another shot between 10 and 11. You don't um, renumber those. You just insert a shot 10A, 10B, and so on. Production. So now we're going to go into production and into our production pipeline. So we go into 3D layout. And so that's your 3D layout artist, some, hopefully somebody who's good with camera, because 3D layout has to deal with uh, the camera, staging, and shot continuity. Uh, you're taking the storyboards, doing a 3D layout pass, making sure that the, uh, the, uh, the camera and the cuts all work really, really well. This is a really important part of the process. Once that's done, you cut the 3D layout um, shots back into the animatic. They go back to editorial. Um, and then you're playing it through. Is the story still working? Does the camera work work? Is it all still working? If it does, animation begins. So now you're going back to animation. And be realistic about what animators can get done. High quality Pixar, DreamWorks, you might do five seconds a week. Um, TV animators have to do 30 seconds a week, but the quality is lower. So you've got to decide what you can, what kind of quality you're aiming for, and be realistic about what you can get done. Obviously, you're going to have animation dailies. The animators are going to get, show their notes to the director. You're going to get feedback. You're going to take notes. Animators should actually write the notes down in a notebook. Uh, if they get five notes on a shot, they should write down five notes, then go back and fix them in order. You know, one, two, three, four, five, fix your notes. Rinse, repeat. You're going to get a lot of notes, but it's all about taking the work to the next level. Lighting. Someone's got to be lighting the shots. You've got to be doing render tests. Rendering is where everything starts to go wrong, so you better make sure your render tests are all working. Uh, what render are you going to use? You're going to use Arnold. You're going to try and render an Unreal Engine. You've got to think about this stuff. And then you go back to editorial. Once the once the um, the animation is done, it goes back into, gets cut into the animatic, replaces the 3D layout shots, and then editorial plays it through, make sure, make sure it all, it's all working in, in uh, continuity. Sometimes animators, you'll, if you've got a shot that's, say, 90 frames long, you might add six frames at either end. They're called handles, so that the editor's got a little bit of space to play with, so they can, they can uh, have a little bit of space to play with the cuts six frames either side. So that's called working with six frame handles. Um, simulation and effects. I hope you're not doing any of this stuff because it is uh, technically difficult and can really slow you down and can go wrong. And also might get you into the land of compositing, which we also don't particularly want to get into. So try and keep this kind of stuff to a minimum. Uh, compositing. Compositing can make your work look great. Here's a shot uh, done by some uh, students at Escape Studios last year. You can see this lovely backlighting here that they've got behind the deer's ear and this light effect here. That was all achieved using multiple render layers and put together in comp, but it does take a lot of extra time, so it will slow you down. Rendering where everything goes wrong. Uh, it's what um, Simon Fenton, head of games at Escape Studios, used to say. You need to leave plenty of time for this. It, rendering takes longer than you think and often fails and, and it often has unexpected 
problems. So you, you need to leave a lot of time for your rendering. Finally, we get into post-production. That's where we add um, final sound effects. I mean, you've done some of this already when you did the animatic, but you're going to tweak the sound effects, make it look really nice, record your own if you can. If you can't, findsound.org, freesounds.org, YouTube. <coughs> you can find lots of video at YouTube. Just download the video, export the audio as a, a WAV or MP4, um, and you, you'll be fine, hopefully. Uh, you're going to need some music, of course. You know, we're not really worrying too much about original music here because uh, we're making a fake project after all. This is not a commercial project, so you can use pretty much any music you like. And as long as you're not um, actually paying anybody to look at this stuff, you shouldn't really get into too much trouble. Education is one of the exceptions to the copyright law. Final mix, adjust all the sound levels so that we can hear everything in the right balance and then do a little bit of color timing. Uh, just make sure that your color balances are all good throughout the film, shot by shot. That's more important on a feature film than it is on something like this, but nonetheless, it's something to be aware of. And here in one page, thanks to the very kind people at Canal Plus, is the entire animation pipeline in one page. And I highly recommend you grab hold of this on the, on the web download it, print it out as big as you can, stick it on the wall to remind yourself of what the process is. Because the process is the process and it is very unwise to deviate from it. Uh, people often want to run ahead, jump ahead, skip stages, uh, and almost always this will create work rather than solving problems. So you've got to follow the process. So that is the process for making a teaser trailer. It is not dissimilar to making uh, a film. Uh, of any kind, but obviously teasers and trailers are specialist aspects of film production. You'll find that there are people who just do this for a living. So there's a, the, the most important thing is to find a template that you like and stick to it.